Hello, everyone. Uh, this time we'd be in English. I'm proud and delighted to uh, welcome uh, Ashley, Norona, and Johnny, their wife and uh, husband. That's why I will do a little trick. Look, I will put that for you. <laughs> yeah, because uh, so how are you doing? You are in Rome. I'm in Fribourg. How are you? Well, I'm happy to say we are well, we're healthy, we have been taking good care of ourselves, we've been taking all the necessary precautions, we have been able to find the food we need, so we're, we're doing okay. And uh, we've tried, been trying to make the best of every day of quarantine. So, could you maybe, I, I know you, you are Ashley and Johnny, my dear friends, but also for the people who are gathered here together with this uh, moment, especially uh, you are in Rome, you come from USA, Ashley, Johnny, you come from India, you got married on the 1st of February 2008. Oh, and yeah. We met in Rome at the beginning of our studies, we studied together, and uh, now, in fact, you have so many projects about arts and so on. Uh, could you tell us uh, to say, what are you doing with your studio? You are doing a special program with sense of humor. Yes. Can you tell us a bit this story, your project? Well, first of all, just to uh, to continue from what you mentioned, it was such a joy that when we first came to Rome, that's when you first came to Rome, and we have such fond memories of beginning our Roman journey together, and that yes, was about okay, 12 years ago. And so oh, yeah. from studying at the Pontifical University of Santa Croce, or the Holy Cross, uh, now it's actually uh, a delight to even uh, both teach over there as professors. So, yes. so that's one of the things we do. But that's one among many projects. Do you want to elaborate on some sure, of the many hats sure. we wear? Well, Father, we so appreciate the ministry that you have, of course. Of course, your priestly ministry and the amazing things that you have been doing, especially during this crisis, but also your digital ministry and the way that you are able to reach out to so many more people than you ever could from from the pulpit. So that thank you for what you're doing. And during this crisis, a similar we had a similar stirring in our hearts. And it's kind of interesting because the background actually happened a few months ago when separately on two separate occasions, one priest and one deacon uh, spoke to us and said, you two need to make videos. You need to share your love and passion for Rome, for art and your joy of life and marriage. Yes. And while that sounded like such a great idea, the reality was we we were already busy with a lot of projects and just couldn't imagine where we would find the time to fit that in. Well, and one thing that's always interesting for us is to see how God's providence and his plan unfolds in our lives and how we try and discern what God wants from us. And very often we think we have it all figured out. And then it's like he said, when we are just comfortable, he gives us a new plan, a new direction. Don't get so, too comfortable. <laughs> so it's been amazing. In our 12 years, initially we thought we would just finish our doctorates and then probably go back to the United States. And ever since then, it's been just an amazing journey from having been the director of an American college in Rome to teaching at several universities then working with the media. And in Ashley's case, it was even more interesting because initially working with the Pontifical Foundation of the Holy Cross. And then remember how yeah. one day you just got that sense for how you're being called to do something yeah. else. Yeah. And then it transitioned. Yeah, so it's been like that. It's really, it's just been amazing like that in our lives, that windy road and windy path. And that's what brought us here to, to be with you today, Father. Because what happened was, yeah, so when these priests suggested another twist in our in our path here, it just yeah. didn't seem like we could ever fit it in. But then when when quarantine happened here in Rome, when th the reality was was that we were a few weeks ahead of the United States in the sense that you know we were experiencing things before they were. And since, as you mentioned, Father, my family is there and we have so many friends there. John and I met in the U.S. People were coming to us, writing to us with yeah. fear. You know, they were anxious, they were nervous, they didn't know what to expect, and they, they were looking for some peace. And we realized that we were in an interesting position to be able to provide them with information and a peace of mind. And 
we decided then to start making videos. Yes. What a great way to communicate with the world. So not only were our videos going to be about providing information for people and that peace of mind, but we were going to mix them with humor. And yes. it just happened. The inspiration just began to flow. Next thing we knew, we turned our living room into basically a studio <laughs> with tripods and equipment everywhere. And we're <laughs> moving that. around furniture to do filming. And the very first video that we created was about us getting ready to go to Sunday Mass. Yes, I remember this one was you very good. That? It was so yes. fun. It was a great, it was so much fun. And Johnny was calling me and he was yes. saying, come on, we're going to be late. We're going to be, we don't want to be late for mass. And I, and I come running in and, oh, I'm so, I, I, sorry, I had, to, I had to find my purse. Yeah, you purse. have to get the right purse. You can't. Yeah, your purse. I had to have the right purse for mass. And uh, your tie. And, purse, and his That's tie right. and he's all ready. And then we sat down and, of course, watched a video, an online streamed mass. It's so this was an introduction to let's look at this lockdown with some lightheartedness. Let's have some fun here. And it just has been growing and growing and growing. So we are posting on, it's called our crazy Rome life father. So our crazy Rome life on YouTube. I and follow you. I follow you. So oh. happy. That's so great. And we appreciate your support so much and your encouragement. It just means so much. And we, we have come to realize that after this is finished, whenever the day comes and we see freedom again, we are going to continue this. We're going to create videos about culture, about Rome, about art, about beauty, about interesting little Rome-isms, about food, about the wonderful people here, about the language. We yes. are so excited. So our crazy Rome life is uh, is just crazy getting started. Life. Yeah. I, in fact, I have to say I'm just a student of the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross, but you are a professor. So you are my professors because my sister told me, look, Ashley and Johnny, they are doing videos. I will send you. They are very good. They are funny. And I said, oh, maybe I should uh, do the same. So you gave me these ideas. Oh. This is your fault, in fact. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Well, we're so happy. I remember happy Johnny to... was washing his hands before the Holy Communion. You know, he said, yes. <laughs> he was whispering like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, so this is your fault. And I said, uh, okay, uh, maybe I can speak with someone, a journalist or maybe a politician uh, here in Switzerland. And uh, I said, oh, I have to speak with Johnny and Ashley. And because, uh, as you know, in Rome, we have the Swiss guards. Uh, That's right. Yes, exactly. And uh, they are also watching over the Pope and over you. And um, um, in fact, how do you live this with videos and so on, but also with the faith? I know that you are, you are very good, Ashley, for doing tour in Rome to see the art, the culture. Johnny was absolutely excellent to visit the Basilica of St. Peter's. Now, because you are inside, how do you leave your faith with the mass prayers? How do you do? You do? How do you organize inside your little room or your little studio of Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting transition because being so we live just about a five minute walk from St. Peter's Basilica and we are so used to having the option of going to mass every day at any time of the day even up to 10 o'clock at night there's a mass at San Marcello just a 10 minute bike ride away so all of a sudden when we realized we wouldn't be able to do that and we would be confined to our homes the question was well this is going to be a very interesting Lent but the question was, how could we make the Lent even more meaningful? And how can we make our lives even more meaningful yes. in order to not just get through this phase, but to live this to the fullest? Because the idea of living our lives, sometimes when we go through crises, we think, oh, my God, why has God done this to us? But the question we should be asking ourselves is, why did God even give us our existence? So yeah. just is a gift. And yeah. the fact that we live in this world where God has given us so much, the perfect response, which can never be sufficient, is to always glorify and praise God in any way. 
And so then if we were confined to, to our homes, we try and be very responsible about isolating ourselves and not going out for our good and for the good of, of the others. The question was, how do we live our lives spiritually? Yes. So luckily for me, so I don't have the most organized <laughs> manner of planning, but Ashley is an expert planner. Teamwork. <laughs> Teamwork. So we yeah. actually try and plan our day the night before, and we make sure we get everything in. And the idea is we are not just a physical, social, or emotional, spiritual. We are, we are a unified whole. Yes. And so the idea is how can we plan our day so that we are actually living to the fullest body, mind, spirit, emotionally. And, emotionally, and so yeah. in that sense, on a spiritual level, we plan our prayer time, our personal prayer time, our collective prayer time. And we found that it's been such an amazing bonus because so many priests who we taught as young priests or as seminarians are now live broadcasting Stations of the Cross, adoration, scripture studies, masses. We get to see, we get to be in in union with you as you celebrate yeah. Mass in Switzerland. Yeah, exactly. Mass exactly. in French. Exactly. Or tell yeah. you that everything sounds more beautiful in French. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, merci beaucoup. Oh. <laughs> and uh, at last but not the least, uh, what would you suggest when you have a relative person or maybe someone that have this uh, disease of uh, coronavirus? What will be your suggestion? I know this is with humility, but how do you will uh, live with this nightmare, with this suffering? So the, the way we can look at it through the liturgy is we see through these past few weeks how we've been led from Christ first encountering the woman at the well in John chapter four. And he gives her so much more than she came for, which was just water. And he then reveals to her that he is the Messiah, the prophet, who is going to give her so much more. The following week, we had uh, the healing of the man born blind. And the question asked to him was, why did God do this? Was it only, uh, why, did, why was the man born blind? Was it because of anything he did, his sins, or because of his family? And Jesus says, no, just so that the glory of the Father may be revealed through this. But it wasn't just his physical blindness, but it was his spiritual blindness that was healed, which is more important because let's say he was only healed physically. Well, in everyone, including Lazarus, who we just uh, reflected on in the raising of Lazarus to, uh, from death to life, well, Lazarus eventually died. And that's a reality that none of us can avoid. All of yeah. us are going to. So the question is, how do we live with whether it's, of physical suffering, whether it's with the virus, other forms of sickness and suffering, psychological suffering, emotional suffering, isolation, or even uh, of feelings of family and friends uh, letting people down. So the only thing that we can we can reach out for is our Creator, because He knows us better than we knows than we know ourselves. So in Psalm 139, He tells us He knows our every thought. He knows yeah. our fears. He knows what our deepest, darkest longings are. And even when we think of self-preservation, well, something we have to think of is that he loves us more than we love ourselves. He loves our neighbors, our friends, our family members who are sick and suffering more than we can love them. And he desires not just their temporal, earthly, or physical well-being, but he desires their eternal well-being. And so that's why... We feel that the best response when we are helpless to do anything else is if we can't reach out horizontally, and it's always good to reach out horizontally to the best we can. But the most effective is just send it upward, and then it comes down with so much more power, the, oh. the power of the Holy Spirit coming down. And so that's why it's so beautiful that through the digital media, we can collectively pray for, support people. So Ashley started an initiative called the Sparklers Diaries, at sparklersdiaries.com, through which instead of looking within at ourselves suffering through different things, we look outward and ask ourselves, in the midst of all this, how can we make our corners, our lives, and the lives of the world uh, brighter, better, and more beautiful? Sparklersdiaries.com. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, it's been amazing because 
on that website that John mentioned, I've been aggregating stories of people who are doing good throughout the world. I call them sparklers. So people who have just taken it upon themselves to, as John said, make this world a better place. Yeah. And so the website has tools and tips for how all of us can do that, how we can look starting just in our own little quarantine reality with our family. Yeah. How can we make our, our family a better, our home a better place? And then to start working out from there. So it's been awesome to, to create that network of sparklers. So check out sparklersdiaries.com. Okay. So both of you say that this is with the power of love, your love and the love of God. So look at that. This is, yes, with that, we will do it. Because if God loves us like you, his love must be huge. Thank you so much, Johnny and Ashley, to share your love, your fruitful love that bring us Rome, uh, the Vatican, uh, to Italy, to India, to uh, USA, and to Switzerland. God bless That's you. Have great. a holy week. Take Thank care, you so Father. much, God Father. Bless God bless you. you. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks for your ministry. Oh. Hi, doggy. <laughs> Bernard. Hi. Have a look. Same to you.